The law of reciprocal proportions, also known as the law of equivalent proportions, is about proportions of masses by which two chemical elements combine with each other and with a fixed mass of a third element. It can be stated as the proportion of masses by which two elements combine each other and the proportion of masses by which those two elements combine with a fixed mass of a third element are the same or for a ratio of small whole numbers. By a ratio of small whole numbers, we mean ratios such as 2 to 1, 1 to 3, 2 to 3, 3 to 5, and so on. In other words, based on the law of reciprocal proportions for three chemical elements A, B, and C, with any two of them capable of combining together and forming a chemical compound or more, if with Z grams of element C, X grams of element A combines to form Z plus X grams of a chemical compound of A and C, while with the same Z grams of element C, Y grams of element B combines to form Z plus Y grams of a chemical compound of B and C, then the ratio x to y as the ratio of masses by which two elements a and b separately combine with a fixed mass of the third element c is the same or a simple fraction of the ratio between masses by which two elements a and b combine with each other to form a chemical compound of A and B. For example, three chemical elements, hydrogen, H, nitrogen, N, and oxygen, O, two by two, can combine together to form some binary compounds, including ammonia, NH3, water, H2O, and dinitrogen pentoxide, N2O5. With 14 grams nitrogen, 3 grams hydrogen combined to form ammonia, NH3, while with the same 14 grams nitrogen, 40 grams oxygen combined to form dinitrogen pentoxide, N2O5. So, the ratio between masses of oxygen and hydrogen that combine with a fixed mass of the third element, nitrogen here, is equal to 4D to 3, for oxygen to hydrogen. On the other hand, the ratio between masses of oxygen and hydrogen by which they combine with each other to form water, H2O, is equal to 8 to 1 for oxygen to hydrogen. For instance, 2 grams of hydrogen combines with 16 grams of oxygen to form water. Now, for two ratios, 40 to 3 and 8 to 1. 8 to 1 is equal to 40 to 3 times 3 to 5. So, the two ratios 40 to 3 and 8 to 1 are related to each other by the ratio 3 to 5, which is a ratio of small whole numbers. As another example, elements hydrogen, H, oxygen, O, and fluorine, F, can combine together to form water, H2O, hydrogen fluoride or fluorine, HF, and oxygen difluoride, OF2. With the same 19 grams fluorine, 1 gram hydrogen, and 8 grams oxygen, 
respectively combine to form hydrogen fluoride, HF, and oxygen difluoride, OF2, giving the ratio of 8 to 1 for masses of oxygen and hydrogen. On the other hand, hydrogen and oxygen can combine together with the same ratio of 8 to 1 between their masses to form water, H2O. Like the laws of definite and multiple proportions, the law of reciprocal proportions can also be justified by atomic theories such as John Dalton's atomic theory. It can be shown that the ratio of two proportions of masses that the law of reciprocal proportions talks about is equal to a ratio of numbers of atoms that combine each other to form chemical compounds, which should be a ratio of small old numbers as based on Dalton's atomic theory, atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds. Like the laws of definite and multiple proportions, here also, variations in composition and chemical formulae as for non-stoichiometric compounds or variations in isotopic abundances can result in violations of the law of reciprocal proportions. The law of reciprocal proportions is attributed to the German chemist Jonas Richter in the late 18th century. It might look obvious or even unnecessary for us, as we can easily justify it by atomic theories, and instead of it, we commonly use uh, chemical formulae, atomic and molecular weights, and chemical reaction equations. But it was novel and useful for its time of proposal, as Dalton's atomic theory was proposed later in the early 19th century. And even then, atomic theories had a long way to go before general acceptance and usage as we know it today. The law of reciprocal proportions, beside other laws for mass at those times, the law of mass conservation, the law of definite proportions, and the law of multiple proportions, were of great importance for advancement and development of chemistry, especially at the first half of the 19th century, particularly due to their contribution to the establishment of quantitative approach instead of qualitative ones. Also, these laws of mass have been of great importance for stoichiometry, especially at its early stages. Interestingly, Jeremiah Richter, who proposed the law of reciprocal proportions, also introduced the term stoichiometry, which he defined as the art of chemical measurements, which has to deal with the laws according to which substances unite to form chemical compounds. It is also good to know that at those times, it was common to use equivalent weights, as Richter is also known for it, where all of these equivalent weights, the law of reciprocal proportions, and also other names or statements, such as the law of equivalence for tolerations, in essence, all point to the same thing, which we describe by chemical formulae, atomic and molecular weights, and chemical reaction equations. Anyway, here we 
mechanics is that we have a law, the law of reciprocal proportions or the law of covalent proportions. Novel and useful for its time of proposal and important in advancement and history of chemistry. This is interesting, isn't it?